And welcome back to the two-time Emmy award-winning Forbes Sports Money. Hall of Famer Cal Ripken Jr. is known as baseball's Iron Man ever since he surpassed Lou Gehrig's 56-year record of most consecutive games played. Well, after retirement, Ripken became an owner, and once again, he's been quite successful. Cal Ripken Jr. visited the Forbes offices in Manhattan to discuss the business of Cal Ripken Baseball for our Sports Money Profile. Cal, when you were playing, when did you first start to think about your business career when you retired from baseball? <laughs> I think my first thought about it was, was right around 1984 or 85, because I was only two or three years in, and I kept seeing players... Uh, um, start to exit their baseball careers. Jim Palmer, uh, I think Ken Singleton was getting close, Al Bumbry, guys that I grew up watching. And I kept thinking, what are you going to do next? And so I was asking them about the regrets or, or what their plans were. And Ken Singleton was very specific at his training um, as a broadcaster. He actually worked in, uh, in one of the studios in Baltimore um, in between the seasons, in the off season, just to, to develop a skill. So I was really fascinated by that, but then I kind of put it on the table and didn't think about it much again until about maybe when I was 34 or 35. Um, so then I started to think, um, uh, yes, I'm going to have an opportunity to do something else. If you save your money really well um, and you really like golf, you might be able to stay in your pajamas and play golf the rest of your career. But for me, that, that wasn't the answer. So I was looking for ways to create opportunities while I played um, that I could walk into it when I'm finished. How important was it getting your first minor league team? It seems kind of like a risky venture looking back because you're investing in a baseball stadium in Aberdeen before you even have a team. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, it, it's not something you write business books about by any means. Uh, and, and my interest was more about the kids' side than it was minor league baseball. I kind of stumbled into the minor league baseball business. Um, there was an effort in Aberdeen, my hometown, to try to get a minor league team in. They were trying to build a stadium. I had value to the political process of going down and knocking on the governor's door and say, how about some help? And we were successful in that way, so I partnered in that, and then eventually I took it over myself. Um, and I authorized the building of a stadium at that time without a team, which that's probably not the smartest way to go into it because you're on the hook for a lot of money with that stadium. And uh, I was able to find a team, move a team, go through some territorial issues involving big league teams and minor league teams, and it all turned out uh, really nice, which gave us a nice community gathering point, and it gave us a chance to see the synergy between minor league baseball, which is an early process of fulfilling your professional dream, which all kids have, and the kids over here experiencing baseball in the very beginning. And they can look to this side and see the hope and see the dream that is being fulfilled over here, um, and they're living it out on, on, in, in their skill levels and in their way. So they're experiencing some of the things that these guys are experiencing. Um, and everybody over here hopes to have uh, a big league career. And we, we know that this many of them really get a chance to do that. So we love the synergy. So we started looking at other minor league teams and trying to figure out how kids' complexes could come together with minor league teams. We haven't found that perfect model um, in Aberdeen um, yet, but we're looking. How do you make that synergy work and leverage the Ripken brand through your various businesses? Well, I mean, in a nutshell, and again, trying to simply communicate this, is that there's a certain value um, of your endorsement, of your name. Uh, it stands for something over a period of time, who you are. And you can leverage that um, in some of your business-to-business -business opportunities. So that first you have value as an endorser, but you really want to build that value business to business so you can pull yourself out at some point and my meaning to another business would be stronger you know have, having uh, having having left um, Under Armour is a wonderful example uh, Under Armour um, they have a great product you know they're uh, getting in and out everywhere we have a lot of kids that love Under Armour my name can be helpful in that kids space as you try to get your product uh, in front of them but eventually You'd love to be able to have Ripken Baseball stand for something that you can pull me out of, and then our value to Under Armour continues to grow as we look for ways within the business world to help them sell products, and they help us with our business. It's my impression that if your main goal was profit rather than growing the game of baseball, your business could be much bigger in terms of revenue. <laughs> uh, Am I right about that? To simplify what you just asked, um, are there better ways to make money? Yes. <laughs> I've left a lot of money on the table <laughs> with, uh, 
products like uh, Propecia, <laughs> Viagra, <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. Because I look at it and I go, okay, I, I can't see myself doing th that sort of thing. To me, it's uh, what you love to do, what you hope that you're giving to the uh, next generation of kids, the lessons that they learn through sport, through baseball, um, and you hope that they can experience some of the things that I experience. So, yes, I mean, this is what I like, this is what I know, um, uh, but are there better ways to, uh, to make money? Sure. All right, don't go away. We have got more with Cal Ripken Jr. when we return on Ford Sports Money. And welcome back once again to the show. We're continuing our discussion with baseball legend Cal Ripken Jr. in part two of our Sports Money Profile. Is there any one piece of your business model, any of these businesses, that is more important than the other or that makes the others go? No, I don't think so. Um, I think all of them piece together really nicely. Uh, you know, our foundation in the name of, of my dad, the Cal Ripken Senior Foundation, um, that and the for-profit and the Babe Ruth League, they all trade off the name. So you have to be very careful about the name and, uh, and you have to see the values. Um, and it all does work in concert with each other, but you can't really place too much emphasis um, on one part of it. Um, you just have to know in the back of your mind that it's, it's gonna all come together. Um, and, you, and you treat them um, as, as special as you can. Uh, I, I know that was a wordy answer. But I'm starting to think it, about these things. There's potential for conflicts all across the board mm -hmm. when, when you're looking um, at dealing with corporate America and, and looking at an endorsement or a brand. Because um, essentially that's what you're selling. Um, but I think we've been very careful in making sure that all the areas that we're in that do trade off the name kind of come in sync. What, what's the trick to making sure they come in sync though? Because, you know, I, I, I've looked at uh, uh, the business careers of a lot of former athletes and generally it's, you know, one, maybe two businesses that they do. I, I haven't come across anybody that has uh, as many different businesses <laughs> as you have. Uh, and I'm thinking of big part of that may be the fact that it's it's hard to make them all gel. Yeah, I mean, and maybe my mistake has been that, you know, you look at too much opportunity and you really should focus on smaller things. I, I try to really focus on, I love being in the kids business. I love being able to promote baseball. And you want to make those models that you have, that have you have put time and effort and learned about those models, you want to make them work. So maybe in some ways I should narrow and continue to narrow my focus and really focus on uh, on those areas. Uh, but my nature is to, to consider other things a, a, as well. It, it fits, um, and it's not nearly as crazy as you start to look at um, the different formations of different companies. I mean, many times that's just the lawyers trying to protect you. <laughs> it's still all about uh, you're in the, uh, the baseball business, um, whether it's minor league teams or whether it's uh, the kids' business. Um, and it all, it all does make sense inside my mind, at least. Might we ever see Cal Ripken, Major League Baseball team owner? Um, I don't know. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot of mileage that uh, people get out of that over the years, and it's very flattering to me. And I think, I think I said one time that uh, the most ideal position I think in baseball would be to actually have uh, the ability to make decisions on the whole organization's level. Um, Nolan Ryan comes to mind right now. It's a real life model that uh, you know he is able to impact the whole organization. Um, and including the day-to-day, -day, and you can see a, a, a nice difference that he made. Um, I guess in some ways I would aspire uh, to be in that position. I was uniquely positioned, uh, my dad was in the minor leagues when I was, uh, for the first 14 years of my life, I got to witness one of the best organizations in developing players that, that channeled to the big leagues. The Orioles were an excellent organization, then I got to witness it at the big league level, then I got to listen to scouting philosophies and developmental philosophies. And so if you really wanted to put what you know to the test, you'd have to be in the position to make some of those uh, decisions. Um, and so I think about it ideally that way. Um, uh, pragmatically, I think about what we're doing now. And as we're gaining uh, uh, momentum, and as we're looking at putting these other models in place, I could get sucked into that and stay in, into that and be very satisfied as well. But in the back of my mind, um, I lived a life of the highest level of professional baseball. I learned, I paid attention. Um, I think I have value there. I think I can help a lot of different people. 
so it, there's a pull that, uh, that uh, is pulling on me. I don't know where it'll end up, but uh, um, I still like to consider that. All right, Michael, so having listened to Cal Ripken Jr. there, I have a question. Is it good to be Cal Ripken Jr. or great to be Cal Ripken Jr.? It's great to be Cal Ripken Jr., Bob, but you have to be willing to work really, really hard. I mean, this is really a two-part success story as I see it. One, he built a great brand over a major league career that lasted over 20 years. Doing things the Cal Ripken way is considered the right way. Secondly, he works his tail off now. I know of some major league athletes that make a lot of money and became huge success stories. Stories like you know Nolan Ryan as one of the owners of the Texas Rangers, but I don't know of any ex makes baseball player that's done it on so many fronts as an announcer, book publishing deals with Disney, owner of minor league baseball teams, endorsements, uh, youth games, tournaments, you name it. So he puts all these pieces together and he fits really, really well as doing things the Cal Ripken way.